Hi, welcome to my channel, Rohit Speaks. And in today's video, we're going to talk about is inflammation. Now, inflammation is nothing but your body's defense mechanism or your immune system or your antibodies, which goes to work when there is some kind of infection or bacteria infection or any cut, bruises, whatever it is. But there is all, like in biology, there is always a good side and there is a bad side. So there is a bad side of this inflammation also. And we're going to talk about that and understand how it causes additional issues. So let's get into it. So what is inflammation? So as I said, it's your body's defense mechanism, which is gets activated, your immune system, your antibodies, your mast cells. These are different cells which helps your body to heal from whatever is causing that issue. So to understand it more, let's look at this example. So for example, you got an injury. It could be a cut or like in this case, a pin poke. So when it enters, when your skin is ruptured, it not only ruptured, it also lets bacteria, which is in your air, in your skin, wherever it is, it goes in. And that is something foreign. It's not in your body. So body will actually, your defense mechanism will start activated. Anything which is not in your body, which is not a part of your body, it will get activated and try to get rid of it. So as you see, it got ruptured. Bacteria are these purple rods, okay? And so what happens is as the skin is ruptured, the chemical signals in the skin gets activated. Oh, we are ruptured. We need to have that fixed. So that signal goes down to your, so beneath your skin is your blood vessel. It's like a pipe going through with your blood in it. So it, that chemical signal goes into it and it allows that blood vessel to a little bit open up. So the, your fighter cells, or also called as white blood cells, they come out and they start to engulf or start eating these bacteria away, kills them. And then you also release is platelets. Now platelets along with your blood's clotting factor, they come together, go to the side and they start healing it and it closed down after a while. So when inflammation happens, you will feel a little bit pain there. You will feel warmth there. You will feel redness. You will feel loss of action. And there is um, actually a little bit of um, pain, which you will feel it. You Whenever you see there is this, this redness like a bump because everything is getting there to fix it. So that's why it gets like that red and warm there. So this is how an inflammation normally works, okay? So as I said, there are two types, good and a bad. So two types, acute and chronic. Whenever somebody says acute, acute means which lasts for a shorter time, doesn't last forever. It just comes in and goes out and it ends. Chronic is where it continues perpetually, it keeps going, it keeps going, it keeps going. And that is called as chronic inflammation. So as I said, there is a good and a bad. So with my wording, acute inflammation is good for you because it fixes you and then it stops it. But in chronic, that signal keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. So it, as I remember, I told you, when you hit it, it gets swollen. So imagine that in your body. Something is there for it and your body is trying to fight it, but it's not able to resolve it. And it keeps going, keeps going. And that area remains enlarged. And that causes a lot of issues. So let's see. So acute versus chronic. So what, what causes acute inflammation to get activated? Anything which is simple like allergic reactions, chemical irritants, infection, trauma injury, all these are falls under acute, which what happens is if you get any of those, it gets activated, your immune cells come, fights it, fixes it, and then that ends it, no more inflammation. But in chronic, what happens is, whatever is their issue, for example, let's take an example of a clogged artery as I talked about in my previous video about the fats or about the cholesterol. So for example, your, your heart or one of your blood vessels is blocked by fats. And now that has become narrow and your blood is not able to pass. So your body gets activated. Oh, you have to fix it. There's something wrong here. So now what happens, it's already narrow. Now your immune cells, your everything is going to go start attacking and attaching it. So what happens is it's already narrow and also the surrounding will become inflamed it causes another additional issue. In, in, in spite of being blocked, there is also more swelling there now. So that is an example of chronic inflation. I mean, this is as simply as put. There are a lot of many other examples. But in short, what happens in chronic or the bad inflammation is the signal keeps going and the cycle keeps repeating. So what happens is it tries to fight it it's, and it inflames, it comes back, but it's not resolved. So signal is keep going. So it's continuously more immune cells, more immune cells. 
it will resolve, but it's still there a little bit more again, a little bit more. In terms of cancer also, same thing happens. So when your cancer is basically extra cells are being produced in your organ, or these are just extra cells. Now these extra cells will occupy more space. That occupying more space will stretch your organ and it causes your body to think there is something wrong and we need to fight it. So it will send it fighters and all these are all your immune cells and they're gonna go attached to that cancer area. It's already there is a cancer, now more inflammation on top of it. So chronic inflammation is a loss of is a cause of so many diseases, cardiovascular, neurological, autoimmune, arthritis, cancer, as I spoke about it. So in why am I talking about it? Because nowadays there is a new age of medicine which is called as dual prong, where they will try. So for example, I took an idea of the blocked artery. So they'll find a they will find a cure or find a uh, medicine to remove the block. But also they will find, they will also give you another medicine to reduce the inflammation. So now it also resolves that thing. So the body doesn't think it's there is something issue and keeps sending your immune cells. And also it will send something to reduce that inflamed area. So there is this new age of medicines which are going to come up and you'll hear about that. So that's why I want to make sure that you guys are aware. So let me take you another example, which is from inflammatory bowel disease. So in this case, what happens is, this is a disease in your large intestine, and there are two types, where your colon gets inflamed, and it's called as ulcerative colitis, and then there is different areas of your large intestine gets inflamed, and that is called as Crohn's disease. Now, this can be due to your back, your, so you're aware that your bacteria, your gut has a lot of bacteria, which is your own. It's your own micro. It's your own environment. It's also called as microbiome, which is healthy for you. But in sometimes your body starts to think that, oh, this bacteria is not good for me. And it just starts attacking its own, own area. And it usually happens in this case of this disease. And the immune cells come in and they start inflaming that area. This is not just by bacteria, but there's also certain types of food you eat. For example, gluten. Some people cannot digest gluten. So what happens is, if it is nothing is digested, it will pass through small intestine and into the large intestine. That's where it will finally get dumped out. But gluten is very sticky and very stubborn. They tend to stick to the smooth muscle or your large intestine. And your body is trying to get rid of it, but it's not. And then what happens is, oh, your body's then your defense mechanism gets activated. It's not trying, it's not able to get rid of it. So their immune cells will come and try to chew it off, but it's not able to. And hence what happens is your immune cells come and occupy that area and it gets inflamed. And then you get a lot of issues like diarrhea or gassiness or all of those things. So this is what inflammatory bowel disease is usually about. And the treatment of this is to get anti-inflammatory medicines. It can also be eating anti-inflammatory foods, which I'll talk about it in the next slide. So in short, chronic inflammation is not good for you. Now, the problem here, why? Because as I said, it's your body's defense mechanism. Acute, which is a short, when it is, it comes in, does its job and stops the action. It's good. But if it continuously keeps going on, keeps going on, it will cause issues. And it's, the problem is it's the same defense system which you need. So you cannot completely shut it down. You need that. But you also need to stop this chronic inflammation. And that's what the scientists have been working on to fight this chronic inflammation. And there are a couple of medicines which are being worked out and will be really good for human life in, May, I would say in a couple of years, you will get these new age of medicines. So let's talk about what's the solution. As I said, you need to get the medication to reduce the inflammation and then work on the problem itself. You can also supplement it with anti-inflammatory foods. There are a lot of anti-inflammatory anti foods. You can do a quick Google search and you can get it. But I have listed some of them which are really good source of it. For example, turmeric. Turmeric is a really, really good anti-inflammatory source. And it helps you with a lot of inflammation issues. It's a very, very good spice to have it in your diet. Uh, fish, tomatoes, leafy vegetables. So again, changing your diet if you have an anti-inflammatory, you have so many inflammatory issues, maybe changing your diet and including more of anti-inflammation might help ease that. And supplementing that with medicine will help you regain your health much faster. 
and I told you there is this dual pronged approach in the scientific community to reduce the inflammation and also attack the cause of the issue. And that will help you gain your health or be much more healthier with any of these diseases. I hope I was able to make this chronic inflammation a little bit more clearly and what is it all about. Thank you for watching my video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.